Thanks for joining us. A woman injured in a horrific crash on Highway 10 last week is on the road to recovery. We told you about the four car pilot that closed a section of the highway for hours so crews could tend to the crash that ripped Hannah Smith's car in half. This week, CTN's Joe Nelson met with Hannah's mother to hear how her daughter is recovering and how the community is rallying around the family. Nobody likes to get that phone call. 21 year old Hannah Smith of Ramsey was heading east on Highway 10 last Wednesday when something caused her to leave the road, hit a guardrail, and crash into two other vehicles. Her car split in two, and somehow Hannah escaped with her life. She was taken to Mercy Hospital where her mother, Becky Smith, came to find out what had happened. And I saw her laying there, and but I could hear her responding, so that I breathed a sigh of relief knowing that uh, she was coherent. Hannah suffered a broken arm, pelvis and sternum, a punctured lung, lacerated liver and had a concussion. Although she's unable to walk for now, the Smiths say they're glad to see the end result with doctors expecting a full recovery. Very, very thankful for that. It's a feeling that grew stronger after seeing images of the crash. The one little compartment that was not completely demolished was where she was. You can't not look at this and say that a miracle did not happen. With Hannah now in different forms of therapy at Hennepin County Medical Center, Becky says she's shown great improvement. She's in great spirit and she's already in the rehab facility at HCMC, which is really almost unheard of. They couldn't believe she progressed that quickly. With messages of support and donations filling up a GoFundMe page, Becky thanked the community and especially the first responders. We've just had such an outpouring of love and support not only by family and friends, but strangers. We have a God who's still in the business of miracles, thank goodness. He saved her that day. That's all we can, that's all you can say. The other drivers involved were treated for their injuries and released. To send a donation or well wishes to Hannah, we have a link to her page on our website at ctnstudios.com. Stephen Karen. One lucky lady. Yeah, just what amazing. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. A Fergus Falls woman convicted of hitting a Coon Rapids man and causing severe injuries, including permanent blindness, was sentenced this week. On Wednesday, a judge ordered 44-year-old Jana Battern to serve six months in jail and five years of probation after she pleaded guilty to one count of criminal vehicular operation. The crash happened last March on Interstate 94 near Fergus Falls. Battern was driving the wrong way on the interstate when she slammed head-on into Elias Youngbloom, a student at North Dakota State University who was heading back to the Twin Cities. Young Bloom suffered a lacerated liver as well as broken bones in his face, arm, and hand, but he continues to recover. A former state senator who called Coon Rapids home has died. Leo Foley served in the Minnesota Senate from 1997 to 2010. He was also an assistant county attorney, security director, and a state trooper for 33 years. Foley died last Friday at the age of 87. Funeral services will take place Saturday at First Congregational Church of Anoka. An easy victory this week for a former state representative who will now serve in the state Senate. Republican Jim Abler received nearly three quarters of the vote in Tuesday's special election to fill the District 35 seat vacated by Brandon Peterson last fall. Abler spent four terms in the House before making an unsuccessful bid for the U.S. Senate in 2014. The Anoka Area Chamber of Commerce hosted its annual State of the Cities Luncheon this week. The event was held Tuesday at Willie McCoy's in Champlin. Representatives from local cities gave updates on the progress and development within their communities. Mayor Jerry Cook shared the progress on the park improvements from the park bond here in Coon Rapids, as well as some of the redevelopment along Coon Rapids Boulevard. Right next to that same Coon Rapids Ice Center and adjacent to what will be Boulevard Park, we have a brand new River North Apartments going in. It's 167 of affordable senior apartments. Absolutely gorgeous complex, and uh, yeah, we broke ground on that this year, and I think they're going to be planning on opening in the fall of 16 here. Mayor Cook also shared the city's vision for re to redevelopment the vacant land on the south side of Coon Rapids Boulevard, which is part of the Port River Walk area. This school year, the Anokatapan School District saw enrollment increase for the first time in more than a decade. That increase has school leaders reevaluating their facility needs. CTN's Jordan Rylance now has more on the task force, hoping to make some much needed improvements across the district, including at Coon Rapids High School. The needs in 2016 are way different than, than in 63, and what will they be in 2026? The Anoka Hennepin School District is growing, and so are their facility needs. After closing and repurposing eight schools in 2010 due to a drop in enrollment, the district is now seeing a spike in students. 
We're having a lot of growth in the district for the first time in, in many years. Uh, we're up over 300 students this year. It's a great problem for us. Instead of having excess classrooms, we're struggling to find spaces for students. With aging facilities, officials want to make schools more suitable for the ever-changing needs of the 21st century learner. A lot of those improvements need to take place right here at Coon Rapids High School. While portable classrooms, school boundary restructuring, and building additions have sustained the needs of schools for the past few years, they are only band-aid fixes, according to Holden. Now the school board is seeking community members to serve on a task force that will develop recommendations on facility needs. We want uh, to really uh, take a thoughtful look at that and then potentially a referendum or a bond for bigger projects that, that fit our district for the next 10 or 15 years. Recently, a portion of the biomedical sciences area at Coon Rapids High School underwent renovations and the result has improved educational opportunities for students. We have adequate lab space and storage so that we can have state-of-the-art equipment available for our students to actually learn what professionals in the, medical profession, in the medical professions use. They actually get to practice here in high school. But more renovations are needed at the high school to continue to build the program. To our rooms that are not renovated yet, we need space and we need to have a flexible learning environment so that students can sit at a traditional desk they can do their computer work or book work, but we also need areas that students can work together as a team that have um, adequate supplies and especially the technology ports. In Coon Rapids, Jordan Rylance, CTN News. The task force will be called Fit for the Future and will meet over the course of eight months. Officials say the earliest any bond question would be put to voters would be in 2017. Some former NHL players hit the ice in Coon Rapids last weekend for a good cause. They took part in the third annual Minnesota NHL Alumni Hockey Game versus the Coon Rapids Guns and Hoses. Some of the notable alumni included Brad Maxwell, Tom Youngins, Paul Broughton, or Paul Broughton, 1980 Olympic gold medalist Dave Christian, and Jeff Nielsen, an original wild player. More than 600 spectators took in the action from the stands. Uh, it's a great place to play. The people up here are really nice and really friendly and, and uh, you know, a bunch of our alumni, we just donate our time. We come up and play a game and, you know, and try to raise some money and help out. A fun game, but in the end, the former NHL stars defeated local first responders by a score of 13 to 7, but the Ice Center scored as well. The NHL Alumni Association recently donated a third AED to the facility, so there's now one behind the players' benches. Theater students at Anoka Ramsey Community College are bringing back an old classic to mark the school's 50th anniversary. The musical Guys and Dolls is being staged this weekend and next. The show set in the 1950s is full of comedy, dancing, colorful characters, and the memorable songs. The college is also doing something different with this show. What we're doing very differently with the show is that we invited alumni back to be part of the production because it's our uh, 50th anniversary here of the college, so we thought it'd be a great celebration to bring back some former students who had been involved in shows here about 10, 15 years ago, some of them maybe even three or four years ago. Guys and Dolls is being staged tonight and Saturday night, and again February 18th, 19th, and 20th. Performances do begin at 7.30 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the college bookstore or at the performance. Hooks, Lines, and Bobbers set the stage for a new musical written by a Coon Rapids man. Out on the ice, there burns a big fire. Can't fight the fire because of the ice. Ice Fish and Opener, a bait shop musical, debuts tonight at the Seasons Dinner Theater at Majestic Oaks. The comedy features an owner of a private lake who opens up his own fishing season to anglers for a profit. Coon Rapids native Greg Iden wrote the script and music for the play that takes place in a bait shop by a lake in northern Minnesota. That was part of it, again, trying to tap into that Minnesota thing. It's like that people seem to want that, um, and it has been rewarding to find out that that was a good guess. <laughs> Once I heard the music, I thought, oh, this is adorable. This is going to be great. And uh, I, I'm so proud of him that he could not only write a script, but all this music that goes into this show. So we're very excited about yeah. it. You can check out Ice Fishing Opener weekends through March 13th at Majestic Oaks. For tickets or more information, log on to MajesticOaksGolfClub.com. Well, Dinner Theater is returning to Bunker Hills for the first time since the season moved out to Majestic Oaks. Stay tuned for more details next on CTN News Spotlight, and thanks for watching.